Diamondbacks, Sidewinders, Fisheye Dodgers, and Fisheye Pros with the patented Moon Crackle Tape, FHS Dodgers flat out perform. Get yours now at fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy guys, Cal Kellogg here. I'm with Lucy the Fishing Dog and it is time for the first fishing report of 2021. Um, I can't believe I'm saying that. That sounds like a Star Trek year or something like that. That sounds like some time in the future, but it is indeed. 2021 it is January 3rd and uh, man, there's some great fishing out there and I'm speculating there's some great fishing out there that not a lot of people know about. So let's get started. Um, down south, south of where I am now, um, New Maloney's and Don Pedro Reservoirs. They are offering excellent rainbow trout fishing and at Don Pedro, they're catching the occasional king mixed in as well. Um, at both lakes, the fish are up near the surface, you know, like zero to 25. Um, they want to they wanna eat shad, so, you know, pull those shad imitations. The, the silver colored Rapalas, um, speed spoons, speedy shiners, trigger spoons, needlefish, cast masters, anything that looks and swims like a shad is probably gonna get whacked. You might have to spend a little time searching for the fish, but when you find them, you are in for a great time. Um, I haven't seen any monsters, but I'm seeing a lot of fish in that, you know, 14 to 20, 22 inch range. Beautiful rainbows, holdovers, um, bright chrome, red meat, you know, the whole nine yards, just awesome fish. The kind of fish we get in midwinter here in the uh, California foothills and valleys. So good time to be on Don Pedro or New Maloney's. Um, New Maloney's about two hours from my house and Don Pedro's about two hours and 45 minutes from my house. So I don't think I'm gonna hit either one of those lakes. I do have some, some plans to get out fishing though. Um, here kind of at the midpoint of the report. I do want to share with you guys, um, here comes a quick commercial. Um, keeping things in the store has been difficult. Um, supply has been difficult and uh, the demand has been getting higher and higher all the time. Um, I have two sets of Dodgers I want to I want to draw your attention to. I just put them in the store. I have a new set of double Dodgers and you'll You'll see the picture here somewhere because I forgot to bring them with me. I made three trips back in the house today and I still didn't get everything I needed. Forgot the camera the first time. Forgot my shoes the next time. Thought I was going to go hiking in uh, in my in my uh, Crocs. So anyway, you'll see the picture right here. Double Dodgers. This is the most versatile Dodger on the market. It's a three Dodger set, but it's really a nine Dodger set. You can run them all together for maximum flash and vibration in big water. Um, you can take them apart and you have three four inch fisheye dodgers which you can use for trout or kokanee and you'll have three mini um, willow leaf dodgers which uh, really accounted for some huge fish for me this year so put a worm behind that and uh, you're ready to roll bottom line is you're getting nine dodgers um, basically for the price of three you could mix and match colors you can mix and match styles you can run them all together you just got a lot of options it's kind of like a, a sampler uh, sampler pack of my dodgers um, there's a lot of value a lot of utility there so if you're in the market for those check out the awesome colors get on over to fish hunt shoot.com grab a set of double dodgers um along those same lines my my uh, six inch fisheye dodgers have been very well received so new for 21 i'm launching them in four very vibrant colors including um snow white um they are all adorned with prismatic tape for maximum flash so if you're interested in that four blade set go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and to grab a set of our prismatic six inch fisheye dodgers and uh, you're not going to beat that price anywhere other guys around the world are selling that same blade um, and you you know what blade that is they're selling the same blade for upwards of 11 and 12 dollars mine are seven dollars out the door a four blade set 28 bucks out the door enough said let's get back to fishing you'll find all that stuff at fishhuntshoot.com um, north, Lake Shasta. Shasta has undergone a, a massive change in the last week or so. My buddy Robert Hauer, he's up there. He has a boat in a slip there, so he's out in the water a lot. Um, he was catching trout, but he's having to work for him. And they were, they were coughing up lots of plankton, stuff that looked like applesauce. Well, he told me the temperature has dropped to 52 degrees on the surface 
and that uh, applesauce looking stuff is now dying off. He said it's all over the surface and uh, what he's finding is the trout are a lot more willing to chase and grab spoons. So he's doing 10 to 15 fish a morning. Again, nothing huge, nothing massive. Fishing that 14 to 20 inch range, red meat, square tails, beautiful hard fighting fish. They love that temperature range. They're up near the surface. So if you're up in the North State, by all means, go get them. Um, and at Maloney's, Don Pedro, Shasta, um, you really don't need blades right now. Troll that stuff naked, play with the depth, play with the speed, start out fast, slow down if you have to, and uh, you are gonna catch some fish. Just pull something that imitates a shad and uh, you're gonna be a happy camper. Um, Lake Berryessa had been excellent, had been very good, very consistent. Um, the consistent part is kind of backed off now, but there are still some very nice fish up for grabs, rainbows and kings. That is primarily a speedy shiner bite, but uh, you know, hoochies, tubes, stuff like that, they're paying off too. But uh, it's not as consistent as it was, but if you're over there in that Napa area, if that's kind of your, your gig, um, by all means get out there, because there's some very nice trout and some very nice kings you know, looking looking to hit. Sounds like you gotta work a little harder for them, but heck, what do I know? By tomorrow, that could change. It could be wide open again. But the fish are there, and they are hitting. Um, Comanche, that's a spot a lot of people like to fish. It's up and down, but when it's up, there's a lot of big big fish, big rainbows, big planters up for grabs. Um, again, speed spoons, speedy shiners, Rapalas, and if you have to slow down, bust out the grubs, team them with a power egg or not, and, uh, you're likely going to get a limit. You got a shot at some fish in that four to you know ten pound range. Just big old, uh, beautiful rainbow planters. I think those are from the Lassen Fish Hatchery. But uh, some days they bite, some days they don't. But it's local. It's in the valley, and uh, you can definitely get after those fish. Um, Oroville Kings. It's slow but productive. Um, my buddy Dan Valdez, I think that's how he says the name, he was out there with his buddy the other day. They got one, uh, one king about a pound, and, and Dan knows what he's doing. He got one king about a pound, he got one king about three pounds, um, and they, they didn't put in a, a super long effort. I think he said they were off the water by 11.30ish or so. They launched it bid well. So if you want to get out and chase kings, there's some nice kings to be had, and uh, you know, if you go out there and make a die-hard all-day effort and take some bait with you, um, you might be surprised by the results. But uh, the fish are there. And according to my notes last year, that bite got really good by the end of January. So we might be right on the, on the cusp of some great landlocked king action at Orville. Um, so that's pretty cool. Folsom, Folsom's fickle as always. They're planting a ton of rainbows in there, which immediately disappear. No one catches them. Once in a while, they get them. Once in a while, somebody gets a king. Once in a while, somebody gets a spot. The fish that are being caught are nice fish. Um, it's just not, it's not going to be a barn burner out there. But again, it's local. It's close. You can get out there and you do have a mathematic shot at catching a very nice king, you know, up to, you know, four or five pounds. And uh, on the trout side, there's some planters in the mix. But there's also some of those Native American steelhead in the mix, which they fight hard hard they tear off line they go absolutely nuts um at uh at Folsom speed spoons and speedy shiners that's your that's your 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 main baits um and if that's not working put on the small blades put on the mini willow leaves the willow leaf magnums get a worm behind it slow down to one eight and just work and grind and uh you know if you're at the right right place at the right time you're going to catch some fish and uh, you aren't going to have to travel very far to do it um the final kind of you know bite that everybody likes to chase in the winter time is bullard's bar um very good kokanee fishing a uh, very productive kokanee fishing uh but the downside is they're 10 to 12 inches long some of them are eight inches long and uh, man, I just can't get fired up about that if they were two inches longer if they were 12 to 14 I'd get pretty sort of excited about it but uh, as it is they're little guys they're biters there's a lot of them you can get a 10 fish limit in half a day no problem put some corn on a tube hoochie spinner whatever you like pull it around you're gonna have lots of action and uh, you will fill up the smoker those are great eating fish they're clean they're beautiful they're chrome I just wish they were bigger but uh, where am I going fishing I'm going to I'm going to hit some off the beaten path spots cuz you know you know me I sometimes I go to those iconic lakes but by and large I don't like to follow the leader I like to give the reports I can I got enough feelers out there I can find out what's going on and get my pictures and stuff but uh my first shot I think is going to be I got this weather coming up so I'm not going to be out there for a, a couple days anyway 
Um, I want to hit Rollins. I want to see what the situation is out there. I had excellent fishing at Rollins in January last year. Um, the fish where the rainbows were crowding, the pond smelt, and uh, I put a whooping on them, power trolling. There's usually some browns around this time of the year too. So we'll see what's going on out there. Um, the other spot on my list is I do want to hit Englebright soon. Um, I see there's a plant scheduled for Englebright and, uh, you know, usually if they plan a lake, um, it, for, it does something. It activates the browns, especially in the wintertime. So I'm hoping to maybe get in on some planter action there by the houseboats and then, you know, maybe get a bonus brown or two as I push up the lake. I've never kayaked that lake and it just seems uh, seems perfect for kayak action. So we'll see about that. But uh, that's a place I'd like to hit. And finally, I, I keep talking myself out of going to Jenkinson. I want to go to Jenkinson. I want to chase Max. I know it could be inconsistent at times and it is a bit of a drive for my house. But uh, there's always max to be caught and they're also supposed to plant that lake So there should be some rainbows around if I can't find some max. So that's kind of the story um, The lakes I named are offering good to fair fishing But uh, if you got a little lake kind of off the beaten path and you can access it if there's not too much ice and snow in the mix By all means give it a try. You know, I was I was doing pretty well at sugar pine um, right here right outside of town for a while and I'm sure I could go out there and catch fish right now but when the water got down into the mid 40s I just saw they were they were they were starting to get fairly lethargic out there and there's a fair amount of ice on the ramp right now so I haven't been out there but bottom line is if there's a place that you like to hit that's kind of kind of off the beaten path and you can access it fishing's probably pretty good and the pressure's probably pretty light because most of the hardcore fishermen they're going to your shasta your don pedro places like that where they know they can put a whooping on some some larger model fish um and the east bay lakes delvel chabot shadow cliffs those places all have fish available it's that time of the year it's a great time of the year there to go out there soak some power bait throw a cast master maybe mix in an inflated worm here or there um, it's just a great time of the year crowds are fairly light although COVID-19 is making for more robust crowds than us uh, us winter anglers are used to seeing simply because people don't have a lot of other options right now um, anyway, wish you guys all the best in uh, 2021. Hopefully we get this virus under control real quick and can get on with business as usual, which is going to seem like business all new. Um, I want to go to a Mexican restaurant and eat my, my body weight in chips and salsa, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a big chicken and I'm afraid of germs, so I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon, but uh, hopefully we're closer to the end than the beginning of this whole business. So seems like it's been going on for 10 years. Anyhow, I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. If you're looking for killer fishing gear, including those, uh, those Dodger kits I talked about earlier in the video here, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com. I thank you guys for all the support, and I am working deals. I am going to bring some very cool stuff into the world of trout and salmon fishing here this year. Again, supply is tricky, but uh, I'm working through it just like all the other tackle folks are. I'm Kel Kellogg. You have a great day, and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. Thanks for all the support. we got to get hiking before the rain gets serious. I'm out of here. I'll talk to you soon.